So, this is, uh, we're in March, tail end of March, it's not very good. Hey, do that. That's better. We're in the tail end of March, uh, 2017, pardon me. And we've got uh, horrible weather as befits the time of year, although it's going to improve over the next few days. Pardon me, again. Um, one of the things that sloppy, horrible weather like this makes you notice is uh, if you've got a Volvo V70, um, especially if you get an automatic, although I bet the manuals do it as well. Um, any big front wheel drive car I've noticed, I used to have a Rover 2.7 V6 um, fastback car. Um, a really nice car. Um, but it did this a little bit. Any big front wheel drive car that doesn't have something like a torsion differential or something does tend to cause some uh, slippage when you put the foot down. Uh, a bit of wheel spin. If you've got that traction control on, I think it works to about 35 miles an hour or something. But I've, I've found it in the wet, if you really punch it without traction control on, it's called either STC in the models I'm talking about from 2001 to 2005-ish, I think. Might go as far as 2007. Um, it's after the 850 Volvo Estates. And then there was a V70 version 1, P1 it's called. The one I've got is the V70 P2. Uh, mine happens to be a 2003, but you know you get them from about 2001 up to 2007. That is the P2 style, and they've got the Asian Warner uh, gearbox. Um, so I'm not specifically going to really talk about things like differentials and wheel spin and stuff like that. Um, but I won't be the the first Volvo owner to wish that they had a Torsen limited slip diff, diff or a Quaif or something like that. You get them for the manuals. Uh, for the M56 and M66 gearboxes but the Azen Warner AW I'm just trying to look at what it is here it's an AW55-50 SN Sierra Nevada SN uh, and General Motors refer to it as an AF23 uh, forward slash 33-5 so most often it's referred to as a, a 55, AW5550 and that's the Asian, Asian Warner number uh, and then it's called the AF33 quite often for General Motors version. So I found some tech notes in, on, on the internet and what I want to just talk about is the adaptive thing because like most uh, automatic gearboxes that are well, since about late 90s, uh, the automatic in the Volvo uh, very complicated systems. If you have an electric drive, you see you can do away with all this. Uh, you can have an electric motor on each wheel, and then you can have a software version. You literally just run a software program that pretends to be a torsion differential or a limited slip differential with a clip. You know, all this can be synthesized with software, you see, if you have a motor on each wheel. So that's why I think the motor in a wheel version of a car is really what it's all about but we don't have that um, but normal driving not worrying about wheel spin and stuff like that the shifts and harsh shifting and bumps from when you go to neutral into the D position with the brindle stick the gear lever and they're automatic with these automatic boxes Adipasat before similar things happen you can try stuff like changing the fluid but the adaptive nature of the gearbox is something that is, it's a learning system on, in a basic way and it's got to sometimes be reset so that it begins learning again if maybe over a period of time it goes wrong for whatever reason. Maybe you have a particular style of driving or the battery was taken off and something got forgot. I don't know how it works exactly. Um, but I'll give you a description of some problems and then the, the, the method without taking the gearbox out or anything, just sat in the car that you can use to try and reset the adaptation, you see. Reset it back to a base level. You'd think if it was an iPad, you just have a button to press another button and hold it down for a few seconds. Okay, they've got a weird kind of code system you use by sitting in the car and doing something with the gearbox, you see. Okay, so here's the problems they say you might have that this resetting might help to solve because it starts to learn again and might learn properly the next time, yeah? 
So this transmission relies on adaptive data to properly adjust the shift pressure. If the adaptation is not complete, it may result in one or more of the following. Harsh flare, that's when the engine RPM raises suddenly in between gears. Uh, engine RPM will increase during a shift. This symptom feels like the transmission has lost drive, like it's found a false neutral. Usually happens between the two to three shift, this says. Yeah, first to second, second to third, yeah. Harsh downshift, bumpy downshift when the gas pedal is odd. In other words, when you're on the overrun. Yeah. Harsh garage shift, that's the thing of going from neutral to drive. Severe bump when engaging forward or reverse from park or neutral. Harsh engagement control. After coming to a complete stop in drive with foot on the brake, the TCM waits for two seconds, then disengages the drive to reduce emissions. In other words, your engine isn't pushing against the uh, the, the, the clutch system and the torque converter, which is the clutch system in an automatic vehicle. And then, because what happens is, you see, once the engine's pushing against the torque converter force with you, with your, in gear and you with your foot on the brake, what happens is the engine is made to speed up very slightly and work harder against that action. So, yes, there are more emissions. Uh, this disengagement is not usually felt by the driver, so it's an invisible thing to you, the driver. If the adaptation is not complete, then a thud will be felt. And then a harsh re-engagement will also be felt. So that's like going from neutral to drive, except the car does it for you. You, you don't do it. You've left it in drive, sat at the lights for, or a junction for a minute. Right, the TCM can sometimes take many miles to fully adapt. If you do not have access to the factory tests or a Volvo Vadis, then you might try the following. So this is the kind of code thing to reset it. There's two. One, drive the car forward in the D range at about five miles an hour. That sounds to me like you don't let it change up. So it's just crawling forward. And bring to a gentle stop. Repeat this procedure at least 10 times. So basically, find an empty stretch of road that is deserted. There can't be cars coming along or a bit of car park or whatever. And for at least 10 times, you are in the D position with the brindle stick, the gear lever, and then you just make the car go forward very slightly, a walking pace, and make it stop very slowly with the brakes. You do that 10 times. The second thing is with the engine at idle and your foot on the brake, so it's in idle, in neutral, your foot on the brake, shift from neutral to D. Wait 30 seconds. Release the brake, repeat this procedure for 10 cycles. So you do the bump, you go from neutral to drive at least 10 times. And the other one is you have the car in the D range going along slowly and you brake and bring it to halt. Uh, and you do, do that 10 times. If the above does not cure the fault, you'll need to get access to a factory test to reset the adaptation. Remember, the TCM is constantly updating, so not every shift will be the same. So basically, what the adaptation is really meant to do is, in simple systems that are adaptive, like the Volvo and the Opus that used to have, um, they just usually hang on to the gear for a bit longer. That's what I've noticed anyway. So if you drive it hard for a while, it hangs on to the gear for a bit longer. And if you find that you're going on the motorway or on gentle A roads or you're not driving it fast or whatever, you will realise after a couple of miles or something, I don't think it takes more than that usually, of having gentle foot on the throttle and not doing harsh action on the throttle, because it's the sudden things you do with the throttle that are taken into account. Um, the, the system will reset or move into different modes so that you uh, it locks up sooner in third gear, fourth gear, etc. because they have a lock-up system to, to act as if it's a manual clutch to try and save fuel as well, so there's not the slippage that normally is in the torque converter. For those that don't know, the torque converter is just two vein systems that are very close to each other with fluid in between. And because they're so close with the fluid in between, it's like having propellers next to each other on a boat. One propeller right up against another, one propeller being driven, the other one is bound to turn if they get close enough because the water in between sends the fluid around in that direction, makes the propeller turn. So. It's like impellers, they're called, but it's like propellers being very close together. One drives and the other one eventually gets the idea. Um, so there's always some slippage if you have that system. So the lockup is meant to prevent that. And in this particular Volvo, I've got a V70 P2. It's, it's a 2.4 D5. I've got five-cylinder diesel thing. Uh, and it goes, um, locks up in third, fourth and fifth.
so it gives you a better drive on the, on the big highway interstates or motorways in the UK. Uh, so that's it. That's that's the system you you use. Uh, I'll, I'll put it up so you can freeze the the thing. If you got up there, should focus on it. Okay. So that's that's what you have to do. Um, that's adaptive reset on the Volvo AW55-50 SN automatic gearbox. It's the five-speed one. And the other name for it is the F33, which General Motors use. It's same thing, more or less, but with different setups with the valves, the, the operating and actuating valves and stuff. Um, something else to go say. Yes, it's the same, more or less, as the AF, uh, as the AW55. 5-51 SN that's the one they put in the all-wheel drive vehicles so there are differences but basically it's the same box yeah okay uh, thanks for watching and listening I hope that's helpful uh, do a thumbs up if you found it at all helpful